From the very beginning, Goragoa feels like an experience totally separate from our usual expectations of time and space. Its gameplay is divided into four tiles, and each of these tiles function as a sort of window into another world. Those windows are totally malleable. A doorway in one square could be a portal into an adjacent square's reality, regardless of any difference in size or even year. Its playfulness with the laws of physics led me to assume that the game's narrative was uh, equally airy, just a series of disconnected vignettes for the sole purpose of creating puzzles. But Gorogoa melds perspective, space, and age for a more profound purpose. Its mechanics are a game-spanning meditation on life, perseverance, and understanding. When playing Gorogoa, all time appears to exist at once. Our anchor point is one man, but the game refuses to be linear with its timeline. Memories from his middle-aged self directly affect his adolescent experiences. Constellations will shift and disappear. Even entire buildings will be ravaged by war within moments of real-time interaction. However, as fluidly as we experience all points of this man's life, he can't help but remain fixated on his childhood. The details of the plot are slippery, but center on a god, the titular Goragoa, and a man trying to find the proper offerings to satisfy it. As a boy, he faces little hardship in this task. He simply walks along the path laid out by the player, and the fruit quite literally falls into his hands. When he finally presents it to the god, though, his gifts are rejected. The boy looks into the face of Goragoa, the fruit crumbles to dust, and he's thrown into a life of hardship. Permanently crippled by this encounter, the rest of his days are consumed by obsessive research on the god and any related aspect of the unknowable. And in contrast to his whimsical childhood, our character spends his adulthood miserably married to this thankless work. We often find him slumped over at his desk or striving to read even after his lantern has gone out. He seems totally companionless and his research seldom appears to bring him any joy. But, because of the story's non-linear nature, his research is actually invaluable. It's only through his discoveries that we're able to bring the boy the fruit in the first place. For example, the books on his shelf as an adult literally change his world. They provide the power to these giant, dimension-spanning wheels that roll forth architecture and time to a point where the path forward is accessible to him as a boy. That bookshelf, vital as it may be to the player, seems almost totally forgotten by the man. He's fallen asleep, staring out the window, mirroring the position of his first sighting of Goragoa many years ago. Despite all its enigmas, the game does give us a true conclusion. The man, old and gray at the end of his life, returns to the tower that he fell from decades ago. The game then whirls us through every period that we've seen before, old puzzles returning in ways that are simultaneously novel and nostalgic. His reflection on these different eras achieves what he failed at for so long. The offerings lost a lifetime ago re-emerge, and unlike the first time, Goragoa seems satisfied. The old man ascends, finally getting the reward he sought from the god, and the game is done. Although on paper the boy's goal is just to collect five different colored fruits, it's easy to see that the rainbow of apples represents something larger, something worthy of a life's obsession. Goragoa is a game about intangibles. What consumes the man as a young adult in middle age and seniority is something that seemed almost effortlessly obtained as a child. Whereas all he had to do as a kid was wander from place to place and wait for what he wanted to fall into his hands, age seems to bring the man nothing but anxiety about the same goals. That struggle, that obsession, comes into sharp focus with the game's penultimate twist. The goal presented throughout the entire experience is simply to collect the apples and present them to Goragoa, but when you first do, you're brutally punished for it. 
Why? It's a question that I can feel present in every pile of books he collected, every diagram drawn and cast aside. I had everything. Why didn't it work? I did everything the game asked, solved every puzzle, identified every pattern, only to watch my efforts crumble to dust. The only way to solve Gorogoa's riddles comes through constant shifts in perspective. Tangled knots of time and space are unraveled by finding parts of the world that unexpectedly just fit together. But this omnipotence, this understanding, is only granted to the player. From the point of view of the man, the series of events that define his life are almost inexplicable. Is there a lesson here? I mean, as stated before, the man's research is vital to finally achieving his goal, but the way his life's work is used is unexpected and often imperceptible. In its cruelest interpretation, Gorogoa is just a thesis on life's chaos. Sometimes things work, sometimes they don't. You shouldn't expect to understand. But I think there's more here than that. The game, in a roundabout way, is all about the value of work. Do your research, work hard, Gorigo seems to say, but don't expect it to be immediately fruitful. Eventually the things you've strived for might just come back around. This philosophy isn't particularly novel, but as, as a recent graduate struggling to find a use for the topics I've invested years of my life in, it is kind of comforting. It's hard now to see the future avenues I might be creating for myself, but Gorogoa is a reminder that now is a somewhat arbitrary concept. Ultimately, things might just require a change in perspective.